Hey, and welcome back to The Art of a Life Well Lived. I'm Christine Regan Lake. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so um, today I would like to talk to you about learning how to self-regulate when you have been triggered into something that is making you dysregulated, right? Um, you're overwhelmed, maybe you're angry, you're overwhelmed, you're feeling incredibly insecure, or maybe it's rejection, maybe something happened, a friend left you out, or someone snubbed you or ghosted you uh, romantically and you're feeling rejected, or maybe you're feeling discouraged, right? So what are some techniques that you can do to help self-regulate when you have been triggered by something, right? And the reality is that we live in a world where there's just, there's constant stress and pressure to perform, to do things, whether, you know, it's in your marriage, your relationship, your work environment, your family dynamics, where people are wanting or needing things from you and you're doing the best that you can, juggling all of life's uh, responsibilities, and you're triggered. All right, so what can you do when you're angry? So when you get triggered into being angry, anger is a sign that you have feel like there's some kind of injustice that, that has happened. So if someone says something to you and it triggers you into anger, first of all, take a deep breath, right? So take a few deep breaths and, and try to get calm. The last thing that you want to do is to react in a triggered reaction, just kind of like an autopilot reaction to some kind of anger because there are very few things, if any, that you later look back on when you have done something or said something from a place of anger. So it's very important for you to be able to self-regulate when you find that you are angry because in anger, we tend to do things, say things, do things that we will later regret. So one of the things that you can do is you can take a few deep breaths. You wanna maybe breathe in for six seconds, hold for seven, exhale for nine. There's, you know, you can look up any kind of breathing technique you want. There's a ton on, on, on Google that you'll find that can walk you through some breathing exercises. But basically what you wanna do is you wanna pause and you wanna just get centered and bring your body back into a place of peace. And then ask yourself, what about this behavior or this statement made me angry? How did I interpret it, right? Because how you interpret it is going to determine why you can either look at it as something that someone truly did violate your boundaries or maybe you're overreacting, right? But if you're coming from a place of triggered reaction, you're not going, you're not gonna be able to know whether how you're receiving this, right? Because the, the reality is that how we receive things is based upon the lens that we have and the subconscious beliefs that we have at the subconscious level. So if you have dysfunctional beliefs at the subconscious level and set, someone says something very innocuous, something that is not, you know, it is not an attack, it's not like a super criticism, someone just makes a comment, you can interpret that as an, a personal attack if you're coming from that place of looking through the lens of your dysfunctional beliefs. So the first thing you wanna do, like again, you get triggered in anger, so take a few deep breaths, get centered, and then ask yourself, what about this situation is making me angry? In what way do I feel like this person has violated my boundaries or has insulted me or whatever? And then, once you've identified what it is, the very next thing you should do is you should ask yourself, when was the very first time I ever remember feeling this way? You might find that it's when you were five years old and your parents scolded you about something, or maybe when you were three years old and a sibling did something, or maybe you were four years old and it was at, school, at preschool and your teacher did something, right? Go back to the very first time that you can recall ever feeling this emotion, because when we're triggered, it's really just bringing up something that's unresolved from the past. So take a few deep breaths. When you're triggered in anger, take a few deep breaths, get calm and centered. Ask yourself, why is this making me angry? How am I interpreting this? And when was the first time I ever experienced this? And then get an understanding of where it's coming from and acknowledge that maybe this person isn't the real source of why I'm angry right now, right? It's just, it's scratching an old wound that you're not aware of. 
Okay, so what's the next one? Well, what if you're triggered in overwhelm, right? So you look at your to-do list and all of a sudden you start having an anxiety attack, a panic attack, because you're thinking, I can't get all of this done today and it all has to be done today. Every single one of these things has to be done today for work, for school, for the kids, for the bank, for my taxes, whatever. Take a deep breath and write a list and get clear on, okay, what absolutely must be done today? What could potentially be put off? What could I potentially delegate to somebody else that could help me with this? Can I get guidance from someone else? We feel overwhelmed when we look at something, we look at a situation and we think I can't handle all of this. So the way to counter that is to take a deep breath, get centered, do some deep breathing, get calm and then start saying, okay, how can I tackle this inch by inch? How can I not get overwhelmed, writing it all down, putting together a plan, focusing on what absolutely critically from a time perspective must get done that day, and then seeing if there's anybody that can help you, that you can delegate it to, things like that. The next thing is insecure, right? So if you're feeling insecure, what is what are some ways that you can do to help to neutralize your feelings of insecurity? Well, the first thing is you have to go back to, you know, appreciating yourself. And one of the exercises that I always encourage people to do is to sit down and come up with a list, a list of either 50 things or 100 things that they are proud of, accomplishments that you've achieved. Maybe it was being on the varsity uh, you know, softball team in high school. Maybe it was graduating valedictorian or maybe graduating in honor society. Maybe it was you know, being accepted to the college that you wanted to be accepted for or you got a new job or you lost weight. Whatever it is, create a list of 50 or 100 things that you have experienced, achieved, or accomplished in your lifetime that when you read that and you think back to it, you're like, yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was an amazing feeling. What you want to do is you want to stack all of these positive experiences in your life that when you recall them, they, they reinforce for you. Yeah. You know what? When I focus on something, I get stuff done. When I decide to do something, it is done. Like there's nothing that's going to get in my way. Think about all the things that you have achieved, that you made a decision on, that you said, this is what I want, and this is what you, what you created for yourself. Write that list and read through it a few times. Take a few deep breaths, you know, jump around a little bit, you know, throw on some music, get into a, a good, you know, positive peak state and start reading through that list so that you can remind yourself of all of the things that you have accomplished in your life. Because here's what I've discovered in my own life. When you drop into fear, it's like you get amnesia and you forget all of the extraordinary things that you have achieved, experienced, lived through, fought through, accomplished, whatever. It's like you get amnesia and you forget all of them and you're in this state of fear. So when you get yourself into a peak state, maybe you know, do a few jumping jacks, get your blood flowing, get the heart going, which will change the chemicals in your brain, right? Then you start reading through this list, visualizing it, pumping it all through your body. You are creating a peak state for yourself to, to get yourself into that mindset of, I'm a doer, I'm an achiever, I do what I say I'm gonna do, I can easily, you know, and then you'll go back and you'll look at what you've got to attack for the day and you'll think, this is no big deal, I can totally do this. So that's how you can get yourself out of that place of like feeling insecure, you know, filled with self-doubt, things like that. I also have a video, if you uh, go into my, you know, playlists, and there, I have a video specifically on self-doubt. There are specific things you can do for overcoming self-doubt. Okay, so the next one is rejected. What do you do? How can you self-regulate when you feel rejected? Maybe you didn't get the promotion at work. Maybe a group of friends went on a vacation or, uh, you know, a weekend getaway and they didn't invite you. Maybe uh, you're dating someone and all of a sudden they disappeared and they ghosted you. Whatever it is that you're somehow feeling rejected, what can you do to overcome those feelings of rejection? One, obviously, again, get yourself, start to self-regulate. Take a few deep breaths, get into a calm state, maybe go out in nature, go for a walk, and start to think about all of the people who love you, right? All of the people in your environment. It is so 
easy to forget and get caught up when when we're feeling rejected a lot of times one of the responses to feeling rejected is to isolate and the problem and i have a video on self-isolation as well as a defense mechanism so you can watch that as well but when we feel rejected one of the ways that we can self-protect is to start hibernating we hibernate we isolate we distance ourselves from people because we look at like okay going out into the world if i go try to meet new people if i go to the bar i go to a new restaurant by myself I'm going to feel uncomfortable. I'm outside of my comfort zone, things like that. So isolating yourself when you feel rejected is the worst thing that you can do because when you're feeling isolated, rejection is actually one of the only emotion. It's the only emotion that actually creates in the body a feeling of the way the brain processes it as physical pain. Part of the reason that happens is because years ago, you know, <laughs> thousands of years ago, right, when we were cavemen, uh, if you were to be expelled from the tribe, that meant certain death. So when we are rejected, it actually creates a physical pain in the body. That's how the body registers it. So when you're feeling rejected, it's super important for you to reach out to people that love you, your family members, your best friend, work colleague, whoever it is that makes you feel warm and accepted, connect with them, spend time with them, remind yourself how included you are, how loved you are, how many people care about you and are there to support you and have your back and love you because it's super important to know that. Isolating yourself when you're feeling rejected is the absolute worst thing that you can do because then it starts to spiral. And, they, and then when you're feeling rejected and then you feel isolated, then you'll feel lonely. And loneliness is actually, they have actually determined that when people feel lonely, they're isolated by themselves, that actually is more dangerous for you than smoking cigarettes. It's because it's, it's so important for your own well-being to know that you are part of a community. And if you're feeling rejected, go join a group. Maybe start volunteering at the local food pantry. Maybe join uh, your church choir, whatever it is. Put yourself into a group that you are going to feel a part of something bigger than yourself. That will help you to feel, to overcome those feelings of rejection, right? Is to plop yourself into a community of kind, caring people who share your values and things like that. Whatever those values are. Maybe it's a gardening club, you know, maybe it's a chess club, uh, you know, whatever. But just get into a group of people who are like-minded and who will make you feel warm and welcome and reconnect and always stay in touch with your loved ones and your family members and then discouraged okay if you're feeling discouraged this is a trick i learned when i did the base camp to mount everest i did the mount everest base camp trek we uh i went with a group of charity climbers from canada i was the only american and we climbed to base camp one on Everest, which was 17,598 feet. And on the day that we were actually the, so it was seven days up and then three days down. So on the seventh day, when we were actually gonna be reaching base camp, we had hiked for about four hours. We came out from lunch and I remember coming around this one section and looking up and I saw the section ahead of me and it was a 700 feet high section that was at a 35 degree angle. And my entire body screamed, there's no freaking way I can do that. And I remember taking a deep breath and I was like, how am I going to do this, right? I was so discouraged. I was absolutely certain I didn't have the strength, you know, the stamina to go up that section. And so I remember forcing myself to move my head down and look at my feet. And I remember saying to myself, from this moment forward, you are never to look up again. You are only going to look at your feet and you're only going to focus on the very next step. And so I did that and I took a step and I took a step and I took a step. And I think it was, I can't remember if it was two hours later, it was a long time. I eventually got to the top of that section and I remember turning around and looking down and thinking to myself, that was a miracle. So if you're feeling discouraged and what the future that you're looking at ahead of you feels too overwhelming, it feels like there's no way I can keep going, you know, if you're feeling discouraged, look at your feet 
and only focus on your very next step. Don't think about all the things that have to, to get that have to be accomplished, right? Just focus on your very next, what is the one next step that I need to take to just keep moving forward? And, and it's amazing when you hyper-focus like that, you know, you're not allowing, you know, the big picture of it all to overwhelm you and discourage you. Hyper-focusing on just one single thing that you need to do to inch yourself forward, that will help you to maintain your discouragement. And I mean discouragement about anything, whether it's, you know, meeting a love, a new love partner, building a business, losing weight, whatever it is. Just think about what is one tiny little thing that I could do that would keep me inching forward to accomplish this goal or bring this into my reality of what I'm looking to do. Whether it's, you know, losing weight, maybe it's like embracing fasting one day a week. If it's meeting a new partner, maybe it's joining, you know, an online dating, you know, app, or maybe it's just getting out of your house more and, you know, going and participating in meetup events and things like that whatever it is for you, just take that tiny little next step and that will, and every little step you take forward, all of a sudden you'll start to see momentum and that will help bring you out of that feeling of discouragement. So those were some of the things that I wanted to share with you. It's about anger, overwhelm, insecurity, rejection, and discouragement. The thing is, it's keeping it all in perspective, right? Sometimes we get so caught up. The reason that we, we can get caught up in these things when we get dysregulated is because we start like spinning into the future and I can't handle this, I can't handle that. And that happens when we time travel, right? So, and what I mean by time traveling is, so if you're angry about something from the past, that's your time traveling from the past. If you have anxiety about the future, that's because you're, you're totally thinking about the future and you're not in the present moment. One of the best ways to help you help yourself stay regulated is to stay in the present moment, is to be present. It's to not try and travel into the future or looking back at the past. It's to be right here, right now, and just fully engaged in whatever it is you're doing. If you're ironing, iron with every ounce of your being and making it a meditation. If you're cutting the lawn, make it a meditation. If you're folding laundry or cleaning the house or doing work, whatever it is, it's about being present, right? And making every action a meditation. And the more you can be present, the less you'll find that you're reactive, that you're triggered, that you're overwhelmed or insecure, things like that, right? It's focusing on gratitude. Gratitude and presence are two of the most profound things that you can do to help keep you centered, focused, and appreciative for all the blessings that you have in your life. So I hope you found value in that. If you did, I would love it if you would like, subscribe, or share uh, my video or subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. All those things help to tweak my algorithm so that I can get my message out to those who want and need to hear it. And I so appreciate it. And please, if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Tell me what you'd like me to talk about. And if you have any comments on your own experiences with self-regulating, I would love to hear that because when, if you have been someone who's been on the receiving end of narcissistic abuse, dysregulation is something that is probably something that you've lived with for most of your life. I know mine was, you know, I, I, you know, when I look back, I think I probably walked on eggshells most of my life and it took a lot of retraining and energy work and, you know, to, to learn how to self-regulate, to learn how to release my trauma from the past and things like that. So have a beautiful day and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.